everyone, it's Liam with Lovely Scrap In, and I'm here with a design team project for the Piece by Piece. And I am super excited to share this project with you guys. This is my very first mixed media collage canvas, and it is 10 inches by 10 inches. And I was completely inspired by Anna Dabrowska, and she's also known as Finnebauer, and most of you probably know her already. Um, she's one of the Prima designers, and she's from Poland and does amazing mixed media grunge work, and I'm so inspired by her work, you guys. She's one of my number one inspirations, and um, I really wanted to give this a go. It was a little intimidating at first thinking about it, but I knew I loved it so much that I had to give it a try, and no matter how it turned out, whatever, at least I tried. So um, I really wanted to take this photo, and um, where is the photo here? If you can see, this is what it looked like. It was my daughter and I went on a beautiful walk in the beginning of fall season this year, and there's this gorgeous forested area next to where we live, and I just, um, I wanted to try and capture a lot of pictures, and actually my layout that I just posted, I um, those photos were from the same walk. So anyways, this picture was just priceless. I absolutely love it. And I mean, just looking at it, you can just interpret it in so many different ways, like this path that just goes on and she's just staring down the path, right? And so the name of this canvas, after looking at this picture and figuring out what I wanted to do with it, was um, I decided to call it Imagine. And I do have it, and I'll show it in more detail here, but Imagine is very faintly here with canvas letters on the side. And um, I've got a light bulb there, and it's just sort of to symbolize Imagine, like Imagine the possibilities that the pathway could take her down, you know, and the creativity and the imagination of a child is just amazing and so anyway that was kind of the theme I was going with this collage and um, I had also taken some still pictures you guys because I knew it was going to be quite difficult to explain what I had done um, in some areas and there's no way I could have done a start to finish on this this video would be like five parts this took for forever because of the drying time too so um, and I just didn't know how it was going to turn out so I really didn't want to do a start to finish video in case I didn't like how it turned out so Anyways, you guys, I just, uh, I know, I'm sorry. I could have, but I didn't. But anyway, I took some pictures. So basically the first thing I had done was just taken this thick blank canvas, laid it down, and then I put a huge piece of cheesecloth that was a double layer thick over top. And I had about a couple inches on either side hanging off. And then I went over it with Mod Podge matte. So that's what this looks like, you guys. Just Mod Podge matte. Any kind of a sealer would work. Um, I put it on very thick and then I bunched it up, you know, I took my paintbrush and brought in the edges and um, so that the edges that were two inches actually came down quite a bit because I gathered it up so much to make a lot of ripples and and texture happening with the um, with the cheesecloth. And then I took wire mesh, which you can see here, the square wire mesh that um, Tina gave me. Thank you so much, Tina. She's top cropper on YouTube and she um, sent me a rack with a lot of fun metal embellishments and I had incorporated a lot of them in here and the this mesh wire being one of them so I actually had cut and it's very thick um, like difficult to bend kind of a wire not too difficult but somewhat difficult so I went and sat down while watching TV and I was snipping the wire in different shapes and you'll see it in the picture um, and I just laid down the patches of the wire in different areas and while it, while the canvas was still wet with Mod Podge and when I see, put it down it did curl a little bit it didn't lay flat because it's so hard to get a sheet of that nice and flat after you've been manipulating it and cutting it so I did use some clamps after I put it down I put Mod Podge over that to make it make sure there's lots of um, adhesive on it and I did use just these clamps as well to help um, clamp down some edges that really popped up a little bit until it dried and these you guys can just get these things at your hardware store Home Depot I got them at my home hardware store um, and you can get all different sizes and stuff and this is just nice you can clamp it onto your desk or you just clamp it onto the project to just to, to, to clamp something down that's um, quite big. So that's what I had done once that had completely hardened um, I had the base that I wanted to add all my trims to and I did take a picture of the base so I'll insert that picture now And then I also took a picture of what it looked like after I put all my trims on. So you guys are thinking, okay, this is a design team project for the piece by piece. <laughs> oh yes, I used all of these trims on this project, okay? And I just took trims that um, I loved, of course, and also trims that, 
you know, there was a few, I have a few different colors in this, but the yellow one is the one I probably wouldn't necessarily use on a project, but because it's going to get completely covered with paint, I decided this would be a perfect project to put it on. So any kind of colors that you guys might not use, you know, of trims that you have and colors that you might not think to use in a project or isn't really your style, if you do a collage like this where everything gets painted, it's just, it's perfect addition to it. So let's start with this one because I got it in my hand. So this red one, I absolutely love the design of this red trim and Bev has it in different colors. Um, red isn't necessarily a color I use that much. I know Christmas is coming up so I'll probably use this in some Christmas cards as well but um, I decided to take a little bit of this trim. But anyway so I put some of that just on the bottom here and you can't quite make it out too much because it did get covered up but you can see the texture that that gives after being painted. Isn't it just, oh, it's just beautiful. I love the way the trims look after they've been painted and stuff. So um, after that, so there's that one. Uh, or this one here is the yellow one so um, this comes in a few different colors as well and it's like a thicker crochet trim as well and that one I added in the top corner just uh, a strip of it going down the side and the paint does kind of you'll lose a bit of the detail with the paint um, I did use acrylic paint and sprays and a mixture of all kinds of stuff so some of the texture got lost but I still like the way that it looks like the texture and grunge feel that it gives so that trim I added there and then this one here, I took um, I took off one of the flowers, and then I cut the flower in half. And one you can see clearly is right here, on that side of the photo. The other one is quite hidden, but the bottom of it is here. Hopefully I can focus my phone here. And then you can see the petal here, and then the top petal goes like that. So there's one right there. So it's kind of behind these elements here. Um, so that one I used, and then... I also used this one, which you can see quite easily. I think this is one of the uh, Webster Pages trims. Love this one. And um, that one I knew because of the design of it, I had to have it in here <laughs> and I wanted it showing too. So I put that there. And while I'm focused on this area, I did use one of her resin little bows. I thought that was cute because it's kind of, you know, got my little girl in it. I wanted to add <clears throat> all different types of elements and one being a little bow so I thought that was cute and she's got tons of she's got bigger bows little bows and these come in different colors what color was this one I can't remember this one may have been um what color was it I don't even remember it may have been a blue or something or maybe a pink I can't remember but anyway I just covered it I painted it first with gesso and then went over it with sprays and paints after and um and then I used this one here as well as this one <clears throat> and I put them very close together these two are just beautiful one of my faves love these all crochet trims obviously I used in this because they have so much thickness and texture to it so those I added here so one goes along here it's about a few inches and this one goes all the way to the picture you can kind of see it in the background love it and then the other trims that I had added were just from my stash. I really wanted this crisscross one, so I added that one there. And then I had added that creepy cloth mesh. It's a lot like the cheesecloth, but thicker threads and a thicker mesh. And I just put that um, kind of draping all the way down over top of the picture slightly. Um, so anyway, well, I put it down and then I left some spot to lift up so that I can slide my picture on because after all of the trims were down, I wanted to paint the entire thing with gesso and just give it a complete base, a uh, white base to work with. And, um, to work with the painting and stuff. And the gesso has a nice, um, you know, it's like gritty. People are always ask about gesso, why use it? It's like a primer pretty much for acrylic painting. So whenever you're going to do acrylic painting, if you lay down gesso first, it's got like a tooth to it. It's got like a grittiness that acts um, as, um, for the paints to stick to it better. So by covering it completely with gesso, it helps with the other acrylic paints that I use because I, I didn't have, well, I really wanted to lay down some thick acrylic paint on the metals because that would stick to the metal. A spray would just come off the metal. So I laid down acrylic paints, like here I used black and, and brown to make like an espresso. And then I um, used a lighter brown here. And then here I use white paint and then I kind of don't really have a teal paint. So I, I did pretty much white from here to here over top of all the elements I placed. And then I did spraying with my sprays and I'll show you the sprays I used as well. 
and so that's how I got the look um, and to cover up all the metal embellishments and then in some areas you could seal it you can seal the entire thing with Mod Podge matte too and it would um, like I sealed the entire picture with Mod Podge matte so that um, the picture didn't get um, destroyed or anything. Okay. So that was the base and I again I took a picture of all of the trims down and covered with gesso and I'll show you that and <clears throat> pardon me and then Sorry, you guys are gonna have to excuse the throat clearing sniffling. I am still getting over my cold <clears throat> Pardon me. So it's been oh just dragging on over the last few weeks. So um, Anyway, so that's what I done and then I after all that I put the picture down and then I started adding my elements and um, These just random pieces. I got tons from my thrift store lots I had in my stash stuff around the house things I've got in racks um, Prima flowers, um, you know, there's Tim Holtz stuff, there's Graphic 45 stuff, you know, this is right here, this is one of those, you know, for suspenders kind of thing. I got a package of those in the sewing section at a thrift store, and um, this was a resin piece that actually broke in half by accident. I was trying to make a mold of it, <laughs> and I broke it, ah! And so I thought, oh, that'd, that'd be perfect to put in here rather than glue it back together, so I thought I would just use part of it in here, and it's one of those Recollections resins. I've got gears from Bead Landing, you know, key um, I had in my stash. This is Tim Holtz. This is Bead Landing. You know, I've got a zipper there. I added one of those um, needle or those thread things to thread your machine, sewing machine and your needles. Added that there. Lots of fun metal elements. Um, lots were gifted to me. So, you know, spring. Um, this was just a cool metal piece. I don't know what it was for, but it's, it's kind of, I just put it on the edge there and added a clothespin to it. And then um, this metal piece, and I'll show you, I'll show you guys <clears throat> my box of goodies. So I've got quite a few of them. I laughed actually when I watched one of Anna's videos on Ustream and she's got treasure boxes too. Well, I throw a lot of my metal stuff. I've got so many of these different containers with like the smaller metal stuff goes in a different container. But this is one and this is here. You can see this was one of the elements that I had used um, on the top. But like hinges, like metal keys, there's all types of fun, random things, a lot of things from thrift stores. This, I got a package of these metal things for like 75 cents, and that would look cool on a collage layout as well, like those vents. So that would look kind of cool, all grunged up and stuff, added elements all over that. But this here is the hinge um, I got, and it was like a four pack, I got a few of them at the thrift store for like 25 cents, and that's up there. So. Just an idea, and these fun things, I don't even know what these are, but I used a couple of them. Um, where are they? One here, and one up there. So, anyways, here's an idea of some fun things. And um, a few things I got from Tina, like, uh, let's see, this big, huge washer. It looks like this. Like, this is some of the items that she gave me here. But this big metal washer um, she gave me there, and so I added that. Um, this is like a little drawer handle from one of the jewelry boxes I took I took apart and I'm kind of altering right now. It's sort of on hold because I went to town on this. <laughs> um, lots of buttons and gears and, you know, flat back pearls to bring texture, charms. Here's another metal piece I got from um, Tina. I think I got a couple of them. There's another one here. There's, you can kind of see it. Ah, right there. Um, you know, I added some twine in some areas. Bottle cap with pieces in it. Um, this is from... Graphic 45, one of the drawer pulls. I've got chipboard gears here too. This is a chipboard gear, and this one here is a chipboard gear. Um, this is one of those um, Christmas ornament hooks, decorative hooks. I got a big pack of those from my dollar store, so I added that there. Um, lots of flowers. There's recollection flowers, prima flowers, I am roses flowers, petaloo flowers. There's just all kinds of different petals. Um, there's a petal there. These are some prima flowers here. Um, more petals there. So anyways, you guys, I'm not going to go into detail on every single one. That'll just, I'll be here all day, but hopefully the picture, you can kind of get an idea of what I used um, by looking at the pictures, but just lots of layering and adding things in just different fun ways. And I just love like the paper clip there. There's so much fun. Love it, love it. This is actually a wood tag. I got that. Um, that was from Sabine from France. She gave that to me. And then also this, um, really cool thick sort of a twine I don't even like a rope type of look she gave that to me as well and that is so thick I love it so I use that really fun and uh, yeah so that is pretty much it the sides of course I wanted to blend the color too oh I was gonna show you these sprays so a lot of the colors um, I had to kind of come up with um, and create my own like this one here I just created this um, 
by using some pine needles distress ink reinker from Tim Holtz and this is one of my favorites must haves because I love I love teal and um, yeah so I really wanted to use that in here and I also love Tiffany blue as you guys probably know if you saw my room tour I've got like black white Tiffany blue happening in my room so I wanted to add that so Tiffany blue um, Lindy Stamp Gang Starburst Spray. I use the Tiffany Blue here, so white um, acrylic paint here. Tiffany Blue spray here. This is more of the Pine Needles spray that I made here. And then for the darker part, for the very edge, I made like a, just a black acrylic paint and water and put it in this um, mini mister. And I just did a thin um, part of that. This is after I had already painted it. Okay, I did do a base of painting over all of the embellishments with um, acrylic paint. Um, just to kind of cover up all the metals and make it all one color then I went over it with sprays and the sprays I used so I actually used the Cadbury milk chocolate Lindy Starburst spray first um, it, it I and I did that along this edge too and then the dark chocolate truffle it looks like it would be a darker one but because of the copper shimmer in it, it it's a little bit lighter after it's been dried so I wanted that one a little bit closer this way so that was the next one I used and then the final one um, in the browns I used was the cocoa bean copper one and I used that kind of in this area and then so I kind of overlap the spraying so you can see where um, the the copper and the teals mix and then I brought in a lot of um, a white acrylic paint into the project I just took my brush and brushed over this way so you can see it hitting some of the elements here over the flower and hit there um, so I just went over and over until I got the look I was going for um, a lot of layering of paints and sprays and then if I didn't like it I went over it again with some paints and then maybe sprayed it again and then this whole part portion I sprayed with my scintillating silver which is another must-have um, starburst spray it's just a nice very light neutral shimmer tone to put over anything light and even dark stuff it gives it a little bit of a silver tone to it so um, that's just one of those must-haves so I added that there and um, yeah so anyways you guys I might get a lot of questions on how I did certain things so feel free I'll try to get back to you but um, again I just sort of winged it because I had never seen a tutorial and I just saw pictures from Anna and I was just so inspired to want to create um, create something like that so that's what I did so anyways you guys there's the sides back of course is just not done because it's gonna go against the wall but that is the sides of it I'm sort of blending the browns and the teals and whites and this is all white and then here um, I was gonna show you this is Prima canvas um, imagine I wanted to make that very um, like a hidden message because it was just gonna go and be painted all white because it's on the very edge so um, of course when you're looking at it you can see it if you um, like in real life kind of thing you can see it a lot better than on camera so um, that is the name of it imagine so imagine the possibilities you guys that your creativity can take you <laughs> I hope this this inspired you to you know maybe create a mixed collage as well and thank you so much Anna so anyways you guys be sure to check out the piece by piece to get some fabulous trims um, so much fun using those trims in this canvas because of all the texture that it can bring out so be sure to check out Bev's Etsy I'll post the link down below as well as to her blog and Facebook and if you have any questions let me know thanks so much for watching guys take care bye now